All right, here's the next installment of our fence restoration. Uh, once again, we're replacing 45 to 50 year old barbed wire fence, which has now already been removed. And then we had to brush out the line and get it corrected here as far as actual property lines. But it uh, wasn't too bad. The process that we used Obviously this one through a chainsaw is to start with on the big stuff and then we used a thanks to the steel company an FS111 and our local hardware dealer here um, for helping us with getting a nice brush cutter. Uh, I'll tell you, I was really amazed at how well that, that cut. Easily up to thumb size, pinky size or thumb size uh, brushings just nipped them right off. But uh, then what we did is we're going to have on this quarter mile line four anchor points. And for our anchor points, we're using 6x6 six six treated. And there obviously is an older fence, but that one doesn't have to be replaced right now. We'll be tying off the tops of these two posts together so, so when we stretch the new fence, we'll have some lateral on it, lateral strength. But uh, the new fence, as I mentioned before, is going to be a 6x6 six six woven wire, uh, 36 inches tall. We're going to hold it up about 10 inches off the ground so critters can still, you know, we don't want to disrupt the travel patterns here. So we want to uh, keep that. And then a couple of spots we're putting actually, if they'll use them or not, uh, some deer, deer crossings where we won't have the netting. We'll have some plank there and that they can hopefully hop over and not mess with the fence like they did with the other older stuff all the time and get it tangled up. However, what we did to get the we're running T-posts at about 9 foot on center real close to that and that should uh, provide a really good support for both uh, the cattle if they happen to lean against the wire we're going to still have one electric running along about 30 inches up somewhere in there. However, to do get a pretty straight line, kind of tough to get a laser set up out here. <coughs> but uh, so what we did is we just took a strand of our galvanized electric wire that we're going to use, just smooth wire, put a couple of nails in the six by six, one on each side, the one on this side. Essentially, is just to hold the wire from sagging down, and on the opposite side. We drove one in and just did a simple loop so that we can stretch it and just remove it when we're done. What it does is we did the same on the other end, but we kept the roll intact. It allows us to just use that wire as our guide, kind of an older way of doing it. And they turn out pretty well. You get pretty, pretty accurate that way. And we're going to keep the woven wire on the inside part of the fence that way when they if they do push against it it's against something not having it on the back side where they can push it away so so far we're pretty pleased with how this is going uh, the weather right now is really gorgeous to be doing this uh, we're in Minnesota it's the end of August and uh, it's probably the best time of year in my opinion probably high today probably around 70 which is perfect for working out here the field that we seeded here we turned it over this is a pasture it was a five-year-old and uh, needed to be redone it had gone uh, winter kill really got us here last year in 2018-19 winter year however we got this seeded on it would be last, today is a Friday, it would have been on last Saturday evening, so just six days ago, and we ended up that night getting almost two inches of a nice hard rain, which really packed the soil nice, and uh, by about two days ago it was already popping through. So very pleased with that. Anyone who seeds hay or things like that, you know how moisture is such a delicate balance. So, 
as we get further along, we will take some other intermediate photos here and most definitely when we start to stretch the layout and stretch the fence. Make it a great day.